the Boisreau machine, named after French engineer Louis Boisreau. It was one of the first ancestors to the modern tank. It was designed in 1914 and built in early 1915. It was one step in the evolution towards enclosed track tanks that would help break the stalemate of trench warfare. But such tanks would not be used in World War I until September of 1916. Before this time, vehicles like the Boisreau machine highlight the resources that were put into solving the immense problem of crossing no man's land, where barbed wire could hold up thousands of men. Barbed wire was in no small part a driving force in the static warfare associated with World War I. Barbed wire had been used in previous wars, one of the first being the Boer War, but not on the scale it was used in World War I. Barbed wire was stretched for endless miles during the war, and in multiple layers. Along with the machine gun, it gave defending armies an enormous advantage. It made cavalry in many cases useless. This drew out battles that historically would have ended in days, rather than months. You want what? You want two volunteers for a mission into no man's land. <laughs> Codename, Operation Certain Death. There was no easy way to negotiate through barbed wire in World War I. Barbed wire cannot simply be blown away with artillery. This would often only tangle it further. It was usually up to the first wave of men going over the top to attempt to deal with the wire. They could cut it, and this was sometimes done at night prior, or they could try and cover the wire. Some special explosives, which are still used today, were used during World War I to clear barbed wire, such as the Bangalore torpedo, used by the British. This would later be adopted by the Americans during World War II. The Boisreau machine was unique in that it was designed just to flatten barbed wire and ride over gaps in the battlefield using huge parallel tracks formed by 4 by 3 meter metal frames which rotate around a triangular motorized center. The vehicle had an 80 horsepower petrol engine. It actually worked pretty good at crushing large sections of wire at once, but it was incredibly slow, with a maximum speed of 3 kilometers an hour. Without armor for the driver, it was a death trap at that speed, and in no way a vehicle that would travel unnoticed. It was further near incapable of being steered while in combat. As such, it was deemed too much of a liability to have any practical use. The land ship may be best remembered by its nickname, Diplodocus Militaris, after the giant sauropod dinosaur. It's, it's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. <laughs> a second Boisreau machine, which started to better resemble what tanks would become in World War I, was developed in early 1916. It was more compact, lighter, and had armor for the engine and driver compartment. Most importantly, it had some limited steering, though its turning radius was 100 meters. Not good. The machine was impressive in flattening everything before it. However, this machine was even slower than the last, traveling at just one kilometer an hour. The design was scrapped, as regular tanks with two tracks were starting to roll off assembly lines in 1916. The French already had their prototype for their first generation Schneider tanks in December of 1915. These newer designs were faster, and most importantly had the ability to turn by varying the speed of their two independent tracks. However, no single tank design fully overcame barbed wire during the war. Thick fields of wire can entangle the strongest and heaviest of machines. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this video on this unique dinosaur from the Great War era. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next one.